to make it what last? Uh, Gonna be able to make it last? See, you should have said that before we came here. What, so I would have two packs?
Facebook. Is that you already? No. Oh. How long ago was it I requested? Like a week ago? When we found out that he got it. Uh, my car, 
It's my vacation home. It's got an extra bed, so if anyone wants to come and hang out later, I'll get all the potato chips out of the seat and, and hang out. Uh, yeah, uh, so basically, living in an RV is definitely different, different, different to live in as, as far as heating and all that stuff, but when it comes to like, wanting to watch the game, like, so I watched the game from my living room, also known as the cab, and uh, the police policeman approached my living room, that's the term they use, uh, and he's like, sir, what are you doing? I'm like, watching the game. He's like, you can't do that here. He's like, I'm, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, you can't do that here. I'm like, this is a public street. I can do what I want, public street. He's like, sir, you can't watch the game and drive at the same time. Is that a beer? No, this is my living room. This, I, this is my home. I, I'm not drunk driving. I'm home already, so you can't get me for DUI. Now my home's in the police impound, so <laughs> I have my vacation home. So, uh, speaking of sports, a lot of commercialization in sports. I'm just, it's insane. Like, over in Minnesota, they got uh, U.S. Bank Field, Ch Chicago has U.S. Cellular Field, Miller Park, XL Energy Center. I'm ready for a real field name. Like Tampax Field, a field that knows how you feel. Yeah, I hear the commentator now. It's a rainy day here in South Minneapolis, but not a drop here at Tampax Field. <laughs> Doesn't matter what sports being played there, any like inning or quarter, it's a period. <laughs> and in baseball, in seventh period, they throw chocolates and sweatpants at you to make you feel better about yourself. <laughs> any like contact sport? When the starter goes down, it's time to put on that second string. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Tampax, so I had a girlfriend, uh, so I said that joke one time. Uh, she was super straightforward. She's like, I want you to be my boyfriend. I'm going to be your girlfriend. I'm like, well, there's not a line. It's not, you, your application's accepted. You're hired. And then immediately afterwards, she's like, I have some unassembled IKEA furniture that I need help with. This is a trap. This is definitely a trap. She needs to see the guy to put shit together for her. She says weird things. She said really weird things. She's like, I want to have a like an old school lover with a modern feel. I have no idea what that means. So I just winged it. I drew a picture of my penis and mailed it to her, and that was not what she wanted. She just wanted some guy to hold her hand like slap her in the ass and like, I really embellished that picture, and she was nice about it. She's like, honey, you made it on the whole post-it note, huh? It was pretty, pretty big. <laughs> so I was pretty insecure about it. Like, does penis size matter? And she's like, no, penis size doesn't matter. I mean, not if you're doing the dishes, penis size doesn't matter. <laughs> so, I, so I went to the gym. I was like, 2016, I'm going to start going to the gym. It's been a while since I've been to the gym. Did you guys fail any, feel, fail any New Year's resolutions already? I know I did. I walked into the gym. It's a taco place. It moved. It didn't even, they didn't even give me an email. I walked in. It's been a while. It moved. I'm like, I love tacos. I'm going to get some tacos and go home. 2017 is when I'm going to get in shape, everyone. I'm going to make it happen. This, this look seems to work for me all right. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Uh, uh, so, I've been doing comedy for a little under two years, and in order to get good at it, you just have to do it a lot, right? And so I live in St. Paul, and there's a, there's a Monday night open mic at a gay bar. I go there because it's a good crowd, they can be a long, long time. But I was caught off guard back in November, and I got a question, excuse me, sir, you're beautiful. What? <laughs> you, you're beautiful, I'm like, oh, oh. thanks. So, are you gay? I'm like, no, I'm straight. He's like, no, 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 I'm really sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I'm like, no, 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 no. You get it. <laughs> you get it. I was the pretty girl in the bar that night. <laughs> Ladies were on the same level. This guy. So I told him that, told him that story, and then they go up on stage and like, told him, back in 2009, uh, things were going so great for me. I just failed a whole semester's worth of college courses. Yeah, awesome. Uh, my girlfriend left me for my roommate. Even better. Yeah. Real character builders there. And then uh, I was like, you know what? Let's make it three for three. So I joined the military. I walked to the recruiter's office and said, excuse me, are you guys hiring? He's like, believe it or not, we are. 
did you know there's two wars going on? I'm like, no, I didn't. He's like, yeah, we're, we're hiring. I'm like, cool. Do you guys like have dental and health care and stuff? He's like, yeah, we do. Awesome. Sweet. Is there anything I should do to get ready for this other than like the whole running things? Like, yeah, get ready for a lot of ass. I'm like, awesome. I love ass. <laughs> so I went as a medic. Now, you guys saw movies. Three months of basic training, lots of yelling, lots of running, all that physical exercise, you know, physical stuff. And then they sent me to four months of medic college. Four months. And then they're like, you're good to work on the human body, man. That's a little soon, isn't it? <laughs> four months? They're like, no, you're good to go. I'm like, you know, auto mechanics go to school for two years and still reference the manual, right? You get that, right? They're like, yeah, good to go. So I'm like, all right, here we go. Uh, so I <laughs> show up at my first duty station. I meet the PA, right? The physician's assistant. First patient. Guy walks in. Guy from Minnesota, actually. Comes hobbling in. He's got lower back pain. She's like, I need you to do all these tests on him, and then I need you to check him for tone. I'm like, tone? I don't know what that is. And she's like, well, you're going to take advantage of on the job training. The military promised you. And I'm like, all right. She's like, get a glove. I'm like, got the glove. Put it on your hand. Got it on your hand. Take your pointer finger. Don't get ahead of me. And you just stick it in his rectum. Him and I looked at each other. I looked at her. We were like, what? She's like, yeah, you need to check your toe. Make sure he doesn't have any muscle, you know, muscle loss. He doesn't have lost bowels or anything like that. I'm like, you want me to finger bang this guy? <laughs> yep. So it was weird. He was. He thought we bonded. We didn't. And he's like, I didn't shake down there at all. I'm like, this isn't a date, dude. It's fine. It's gonna be okay. So we did. We did. Got over that. And then like a week later, I'm in a battalion of 900 dudes. I'm gonna see this dude again. Sure enough, at the bar, I see him, and he's with two of his buddies. And he's like, point at me. And they all of a sudden, you make me lock eyes. And he's like, hey man, how's it going? It's really good to see you. Don't point your finger at me, man. <laughs> from that day forward, I'll never forget that asshole from Minnesota. <laughs> I'm like, Luke Parker, that's my time. That's my time. So excited. So, we have, we have extra comedy for you. We have extra comedy. We have a guest set. Yeah, you got more, than, more for your dollar. It's, it's great. We have a guy come all the way from uh, also the Twin Cities. We drove separately because we're like, screw the ozone layer. Please give a round of applause for Mr. Neil Kumar. <laughs> all right, let's hear it for Luke. Come on, let's hear it. Productive group of individuals. Uh, I appreciate all that. I don't want to think about my stunt double. You ever think about that? You ever wonder what your stunt double is doing? Because huh? we all have stunt doubles. Not that I'm a big Hollywood action hero in line, but if I was, I'd have a stunt double. Which means this person exists. And I want to meet him. You know, sit around and have a conversation with him, ask him about his life. Maybe he's like a frustrated industrial worker or something like that. His life sucks because I never made it. <laughs> and the amount of power you have over someone where all you gotta do is live a subpar of life and they're gonna be a few steps behind that's a fucking win life's not all about winning it's also about preventing the other person from winning <laughs> nah don't do that that's fucking mean <laughs> sometimes people get a little confused about my ethnicity man like a few years ago an elderly gentleman came up to me and said so what are you I said I'm Indian he's like oh yeah which tribe I said, you don't try as an Indian? <laughs> I mean, it was not spiteful, it was innocent, you know. So I, I said, I guess that makes me an Indian of the God. He, no, he, he said, I said, I said, I guess, oh, sorry. <laughs> I said, I guess that makes me an Indian of the God variety. He said, because you look more like a feather. I'm like, come on, man, I dug you out of that boat, you made it all good for yourself again. You know? But anyway, like, I don't think that shit too serious, man. Like, a couple weekends ago, I found out that I'm racist. Shocked me, blew my mind, thought it was not possible. Like, you know, I was at a bar, and I wanted to go close out my tab. And the bartender was white, and she asked me my last name. I'm a very long name, your last name, so to make it easy for her, I gave her the first few letters. I said B A N D H A. She looked at me, she said V, and I said, Yeah, B. And this went back and forth for a while because the music was really loud, and frankly, I was a little fucked up. <laughs> then she gave me this condescending look, and she said, I think you mean W. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea what she was talking about, but I was livid. I was going to go out this whole irrational rant that I'm somehow a victim of racism. I was going to say, Bitch, you think I'm Mexican, don't you? I speak the Queen's English. I was willing to embrace centuries of colonial tyranny just to prove to this innocent woman that I'm not Mexican. 
How fucking racist is that? <laughs> Some identity crisis racism. I don't know, man, you know. You, gotta, you, you can't take this shit too seriously, like I guess, you know I mean? There's too many colors in the world. I just take advantage of my situation. Like, I'm not originally from this country, so I spend my Thanksgiving with American families. And I actually all take my Thanksgiving with American families. So I can hear what one group says about the other thing behind closed doors. <laughs> and they say a lot of shit, you know? But I hope they don't find out, you know? That's someone looking Mexican Arab with an Indian name. <laughs> I knew he was a snitch. And he ate all the gravy. That's always the biggest complaint. The Indian dude ate all the gravy. It's kind of funny though. A dot ate all the gravy. At a holiday that was once celebrated with feathers. <laughs> Alright. I'm a connoisseur of country music. Yeah, see, no, you know, only one person believe me. No one else believes me. Because they're like, no, you're not. That's why I gotta do my windows roll up. Because every now and then you pull up to the stoplights, and I can't explain to black or white people when I'm listening to this music. That's why I think blacks and whites are in full agreement when I'm listening to country music. That's an arrogant thing to say. You guys can loosen up, it's fine. <laughs> I don't know, I'm kidding, man. I'm actually Irish. <laughs> so I'm taking it easy with my drinking. I'm trying to curb those Irish roots. Yeah. People always brag about their heritage when it comes to drinking, right? And you know, you always hear, especially the Irish, you always hear people say, it's the Irish in me. You know, people always call their, their Irish heritage on their drinking, which makes me wonder, have the Irish ever signed off on the frivolous use of their heritage? <laughs> to explain any sort of irresponsible behavior? <laughs> no one ever associates anything great with being Irish. People never say, my granddaughter was nominated for the Nobel Prize. You know, he's an intelligent Irishman. <laughs> Or my brother, he does voluntary community service. He's a philanthropic Irishman. <laughs> nah, it's always some shit like I drank half a bottle of whiskey, then I got into a bar fight, then I tried to get home not on the bus but on top of the bus, <laughs> and I passed out in a gun. You know, I'm 116th Irish. <laughs> Someone in the fuck fest of my genealogy tree is one Irishman, so I get to behave like a drunken piece of shit. <laughs> Now the cool people, man, give it up for the Irish. Let's hear it for the Irish, at least. <laughs> okay, it's okay, I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm a spokesperson for the Irish either, you know? It's good. I like to check once a month. I don't know. Fuck it, let's talk about the British too, then. What about the British? They're an interesting group of people, aren't they? Yeah! Yeah? Yeah? Woo! They still, yeah. You guys, are you British? Or are you just excited about them? No, we were stationed there for eight years. Okay, okay. They got a royal family. They got a fucking, they got a queen and shit like that. You know what I mean? You ever wake up and want to be a queen one day? Oh, I uh, know. Anybody, you know? Can we, anyway, can we unanimously agree that it's time to downgrade this family from royalty status to celebrity status? Yeah. yeah. They're fucking celebrities, right? They're rich, they like to do rich shit, and we like to see that. It's 2016, you're a queen? What kind of queen shit do you do? Wear your stolen jewelry collection to a Victorian ball? <laughs> People don't make it when I said in the person of witness is really reported. We just haven't written it yet. <laughs> yeah, see what motherfucker. Obviously, dictionary English is your language. Check it out. You know, I, I think we're all infatuated with the British. I think, I think it's the accent. Anytime someone says something in a British accent, you just gotta agree. You're like, yeah, sounds right. Even I get cramps in my crotch anytime I hear that accent. Yeah? Said in the perfect form of language, how could he be wrong? Like, you know, I grew up in countries that were once British colonies and we have a Stockholm Syndrome type relationship with the British. So when I moved to America, I was all excited. I was like, America, fuck yeah, screw the British. <laughs> That's what I was saying. People were like, no, man, we have nothing against the British. Which kind of let me down because the United States is the only country that defeated the British on the battlefield to win their independence. <laughs> I mean, granted, there's white people fighting white people over taxes. <laughs> but you still won. You still won. <laughs> Every other country was granted its independence, just given their independence because it was no longer financially feasible to hold them as colonies after World War II. That's not independence. That's like saying I'm tired of fucking you and the dinners are getting expensive. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, I'm just, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't hurt the British, man, you know, because, you know, they're too, they're too confident, they're too confident, like, you know. There, there was a line that once said, you know, that, that the British Empire was so expansive that the sun never set on the British Empire. The things we say when we're on top. The sun does not set on me, baby. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Try that sometime. Next time you're making love to your girl, just look into her eyes and tell her that the sun does not set on you. <laughs> Alright. Well, I'm going to leave you with this, guys. I was reading this article. 
I was reading an article recently that there's underdeveloped countries in this world that have absolutely no cell phone infrastructure. And some of these are emerging economies because they are, they're just beginning to build out their cell phone networks. And because they're doing it now, they're building the latest and greatest 4G networks. <laughs> I mean, somewhere out there, in an, under, in an underdeveloped nation, in a little rural village, there's a starving little kid who's complaining about his internet. <laughs> and his mom says, finish your YouTube videos, son. This kid's in rural America, only have 3G right now. <laughs> All right, guys, you've been absolutely amazing. Thank you for having me. Your feature. All right, another video on this guy. We all drove separately. It's great. We're just like, screw it. We're just gonna drive by ourselves. This guy, very funny man. He uh, he's been at an Aspen Comedy Festival and was Acme Comedy Club's funniest person of the year. Give a big round of applause for Ben Sandell. <laughs> Everybody? How's it going, Del? Man? I feel like I should back up for you because you've got a beautiful view of my crotch right now. I was really... I feel like I should have worn a cod piece for the show. That would have been my opener. I just would have stood here silently. <laughs> Shut my coffees and thank you for coming to the show. <laughs> How, how's your neck feeling? You look like. Okay, I'll, I'll just back up as far as I can. Does that help? Okay, good. Alright, well, thanks for coming. You guys, um, did you pay extra for the front row seats or did you get a discount for this? Because <laughs> you guys are looking down at me like gods up there. You, this is insane. I didn't even notice there was that balcony. Nobody, is anybody up there? Oh, there is. <laughs> All right, keep going, balcony. <laughs> I'm very excited. They couldn't see my copies from there, so that would be just for you guys. <laughs> well, where do I go from here? I started with copies, so now I don't know what I can do. Well, I should introduce myself. My name is Ben. Uh, good to meet you. To help you remember my name. In elementary school, this is true, uh, other kids would call me Benjamin Franklin as an insult. And I, it hurt my feelings. My mom said, like, well, tell us this, thank you. Benjamin Franklin is an American hero. So I told them that. And they kicked my ass. <laughs> Same thing happened to my older brother Alex, I think he's called him Alexander the Great. My mom was like, well, tell us his thank you, Alexander the Great. It was great. <laughs> and then uh, my younger brother, Adolf, uh, <laughs> was homeschooled, so that worked out. <laughs> What? Something said the hat. I'm just gonna let that lay there, because I'll come back to that maybe later if I do a hat joke, which I don't have one and I'm regretting it now. <laughs> My parents were they were very passive aggressive when it came to raising us. When I got to junior high, uh, they were concerned that I might start having sex, and they didn't want that to happen, so they sat me down and said, "Listen, we're enrolling you in marching band." <laughs> I can play the tuba or the flute. <laughs> this guy knows, he did it. He's a clarinet player right here, I can tell. <laughs> That's what you're eating corn to go. Are you a marching man? No, but uh, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you hesitated, like, uh, no. What? You put like a secret marching man? <laughs> You were, in, you were in a band called Nerd. All right, awesome. <laughs> High five, Nerd. Yeah. He's in a band called Nerd. Surprised there isn't a band called Nerd. Probably is. 
<laughs> oh, there it is. You're, you're fanning yourself like a southern dame right now. You're like, there's some of the papers. <laughs> there's a, a band called Nerd. Is, are they good? Oh, Pharrell. Oh, well, I feel totally unhip right now. Okay, well, thank you. God, I suddenly feel super out of touch. I play the trombone. <laughs> the other kid's called it the boner. <laughs> Playing your boner. <laughs> My mom was like, tell them thank you. I'm like, shut up, mom. God damn it. Because I'm hell, stop. So yeah, I played the trombone in the marching band. Uh, it was a big science nerd. I was just rolling in the pussy. That's really what the whole story. <laughs> I never used that word. It's totally just came out right there. <laughs> you had to bring it up. I was. I was in a uh, yeah, science class, and this is true. Um, I regular. I have acid burns from science class. We were testing acid. I have little like white dots on my elbow and like white dots on my arm, which is, it, I don't know. It's, it's not fit. Scars are supposed to be like sexy, you know, and cool. People brag about their scars. Like, yeah, I got this scar in gunfight, combat. I got this scar in a knife fight, in combat also. <laughs> yeah, well, I got these guys in. 10th grade honors biology. <laughs> Squeeze my beaker a little too hard. <laughs> Burn so bad I couldn't wear my band uniform for three weeks. I was like, no doctors, I can be back in pray in two weeks. I'm like, you're insane. <laughs> you're a madman. So you know what's the same? I'm marching now with his fifth ranked trombone, and that's insane. I'm in a band called Nerd, and I'm getting back out there right now. And I grabbed a lollipop and I walked out of that office. <laughs> to my mom's minivan. Just ten years later, I had sex with a woman. Boom! <laughs> This is a nerdy crowd, all right, go ahead. I watched football once in a while. I was watching it last week, uh, and I was noticed, like there was like three players in a row who, after they won, thanked uh, the Lord. And part of me was like, okay, fine, but how come nobody blames the Lord when they lose? That doesn't make any sense to me. It, it, it has to go both ways. Just one time I want to see somebody like, well, we lost, so I just want to say, uh, I don't see I just want to see that. <laughs> I thank the Lord. I, you know what? I have to say, I'm a tiny bit offended about that because it's like then they're they're implying that God cares what a bunch of millionaire athletes do on Sunday. <laughs> if He does care, He's pissed. It doesn't make sense. Don't think that I'm like it's like a humbling thing. Like, oh, it's not me. It's the Lord. That's not humbling. It's not humbling. Uh, you know, uh, I'm with God, you guys. That's that's what uh, that's what made me win was uh, the Lord picked up my ball and delivered it right to where I wanted it to go. I pushed the Lord thing went too far. All right, that's what it that's what it was. I still have three of you on my side at this point. It's always risky to talk about religion on stage in front of an audience. I am religious, but not as much as I used to be. I I grew up in a really hardcore. Uh, religious family, and I sort of drifted away from that over the years, and it's weird to drift away because I'm like, still kind of do it, like, I'm sort of nervous if I don't kind of do it, uh, I'm going to get in trouble, but then part of me is also like, I feel like I'm just pissing God off more by like doing it like half-assed. Like, religion for insurance purposes. So it's like, like, friends with benefits with God. I don't know if that... I'm scared that it's just going to make him angrier. 
Like, I don't know if that's going to work. Like, if I die, and I go to St. Peter, St. Peter's like, all right, so you um, ignored most of what the Bible said, but you did go to church most Christmases, <laughs> and right before the uh, semi-truck swerved into your lane, you didn't manage to scream, I accept Jesus in my heart! So that oddly it does, uh, it does count, count. You can't use the pearly gates, you have to crawl through this dark, slippery tunnel named loophole over here, you fucking cheater, but that's, uh... <laughs> So I don't know, I don't know if I'm making it worse or not. I go full hardcore religion. And so like part of me is also like, how do I even know that you know what I believe in is the right one? Because I just believe whatever my parents believe. Like they told like my dad had asked me to use a text message the other day, and like I'm taking my wisdom of life from these people. It seems weird, but that's what happens. Like people tend to grow up believing whatever it is their parents believe. Like both their parents are Catholic, who like to grow up Catholic, which isn't wrong. I'm not saying that's wrong. But you could have just as easily grown up in a Jewish family and grown up Jewish, which is wrong. So how do you know, like, what kind of, uh... <laughs> My brother wrote that joke. <laughs> Crazy enough, you know, he always gets that joke. I don't know. It's just sort of, you know, if I offend anybody, you know, it's it's easy to offend people. And sometimes I, I'm glad that people get offended easily, like with swearing. I'm glad that there are people who get offended at swear words. Because if people didn't care that you swore, they would not be satisfying to say. <laughs> like, swear words only have power because people care that you're swearing. Otherwise, like, if you hit your thumb with a hammer, there would be nothing you could say that would mask the intensity of the pain that you felt. <laughs> these people make these words sacred, so I thank them. If you're as offended as swear words, because there's nothing really naturally offensive about swear words. They're just a sound you make. We just decided as a society that this word is going to be offensive, kind of arbitrarily. We could have decided a, a totally different word. The F word could have been fiddlestick. There's no reason. The middle finger could have been a thumbs up. You could get like get caught up in traffic and be like, ah, oh, fiddle shake you. That could have been the world we lived in. <laughs> and the, the middle finger could have been the thumbs up. That could have been the, like watching a football game when a player gets taken away in the gurney. Like, He's okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> He's okay. He gave middle finger. The universe is fine. Everything's fine. And by the way, it's sort of fun, just in your day-to-day life, to treat the thumbs up as a middle finger. Just for you to have, like your boss is like, we need to have you work on Sunday. Sure! Like, they will get the joke, they will be laughing on the inside, so just take that. Out. Some of you are going to use that, I think. Uh, I've been sort of, um, I've been thinking about that, like, how can I be happier? And, uh, and they used to think, like, it was, like, <laughs> that it was, like, trying really hard, and I would be happy, like, the more, like, productive I was. And that wasn't working out, now I, now I kind of think it is, it's just sort of, uh, good enough. Like, that philosophy is a secret to happiness. It's, like, trying to not try that hard. I think we get in a lot of trouble when we try really hard because perfection is unattainable. Like, perfection isn't something that exists. So, good enough. That guy's all out of right now, right? He knows. Good enough is really the best anyone can ever do in any situation because perfection doesn't exist. So, at some point, you just have to say good enough and then be okay with that. And I think good enough is a beautiful thing. I think we're all here because of good enough. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to offend my audience. That's going to win you all over. But we're here because of good enough. We're here because we live in the Midwest. We live in the Midwest.
because we had ancestors a long time ago, those westward Oregon Trail ancestors who got halfway and said, good enough. <laughs> halfway, I quit. Are you sure? Yeah, you betcha. And that's how. And most of us are here because of good enough. Because your mom, your dad looked at each other and went, yeah, okay, fine, all right, I'm drunk, so. Good enough is a beautiful thing. Most solid, not most, all solid relationships are based off the premise of good enough. Because it's going to get a little touchy here. <laughs> For some of you romantic types. But... The best you can do in a relationship is good enough. And you have to kind of settle for it because perfection is unattainable. So there are seven billion people in this world. Even if you find somebody you love and adore, there's still probably like nine million other people who need a better match. This is why I don't speak at weddings, by the way. This is not. I was at a wedding, and uh, the, the bride was giving her vows, and she was like, this is the best man in the world, and I was like, he's not the best man in the world, he's not even the best man at this wedding. <laughs> There's another man here who literally has that title, that's why they're the best man at weddings, so remind me, the groom is not, but he's good enough. <laughs> he's good enough, which is more than enough to be happy. I don't know why I looked at you guys, that's, that didn't mean anything. Sometimes, sometimes he's not good enough, and that's the touchy part. That's like, how do you know like, when you cross the line into good enough versus not good enough? I had somebody come up to me and it's like, well, I settled for somebody who was good enough, and it didn't work out. And I was like, well, then they weren't good enough. I don't know if you understand the definition of good enough. You don't settle for good enough. <laughs> This is totally different than settling for could be worse. That's the whole other thing. <laughs> so how do you know? That's, that's really the question. In any, any situation, like, how do you know what's good enough versus could be worse? <laughs> I think that, because I see people in, in not good enough relationships all the time, and I've been there myself, and how do you tell is, if you're like worse off than you were when you were single. Because being single is not that bad. Like the worst part of being single is like, oh, I should be with somebody. That's like the worst part of worrying that you're not, that you are single. And so if your relationship is makes your single life better, like if it improved on you being single, that's good enough. If it didn't improve, made it worse, not good enough. But you see people in that kind of relationship all the time. And people stay in that kind of relationship for years for the weirdest reasons. Like if you think it's destiny, if you said got in your head that they're your soulmate, you'll give them the benefit of the doubt. And I've done that. I was in a bad relationship for three years because on the first day, I saw a shooting star. And I thought that was a sign from the universe that she was the one. Turns out it was God going, fire the warning flare! <laughs> Some of you relate to that more than others. <laughs> Some people um, will stay in bad relationships. And this is true. This is weird. But it's, people will stay in bad relationships because they are too nice to like break up with somebody. I don't know if that's like led to like somebody being married or whatever, but it just seems like, like oh, I don't want to put up the conflict. And I've done that too. Like, oh, I've stayed in relationships way too long because of the conflict of breaking up, which is something I want to do. But that's taking nice to an inappropriate level. And I do that all the time, just in my day to day life. Like, the other day I was walking across the street toward this building, and there was a guy standing outside the building, and he opened the door for me. I wasn't planning on going into that building. <laughs> But I didn't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> so I said thank you and I walked inside. 
Next thing all the strippers offered me a lap dance. I wasn't planning on getting a lap dance, but I didn't want to hurt his feelings. So I married him, and that's really all. Well. I couldn't, can't help this. It was good enough. It was good enough. Good enough. That's the secret. I was thinking about that, that book, the, the ancestors getting halfway, like halfway across the country. And so I quit. Like a halfway to their goal. It took weeks, months to get that far because I quit. And that just takes courage, I think. They quit and then they built this like these cities that became outposts for people who follow. And it occurred to me that the entire world was built by people not achieving their goals. <laughs> So next time somebody makes you feel like a loser, you look at them and go, no, 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 I'm not a loser. I'm a pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. I feel like I talk, should talk about some sex now. <laughs> like religion and philosophy. I, uh, I've always wanted to visit the world's largest ball of yarn. <laughs> and bring with me the world's uh, largest herd of cats and just throw the cats on my yarn, see what happens. But then I, re- I learned I can't do that because there isn't a ball of yarn that's like the world's largest ball of yarn. It's all twine. I don't know why it's all twine, but there's largest balls of twine, which is, is weird because you can't make a sweater out of twine. I don't know why that is, but there's also, it's in debate as to what sh- there's like multiple balls of twine that are the largest, apparently, and people are fighting over what is the largest over others. And there's one in Baldwin, Minnesota, there's one in Kansas City. I think that like a show of unity in this time of conflict, they should bring the two balls together <laughs> and display them proudly at the base of the Washington Monument. <laughs> All the Trump towers. I'm not a lot of Trump fans in the eyes. I am too, I have a stare guys, so it's okay. It's... That's the most patriotic dick joke I've ever had here. Uh, anybody on a, a date tonight? <laughs> That's so <something> sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, Christ. <laughs> One person, <laughs> very romantic crowd. I, uh, what? They said something, or am I hallucinating? <laughs> so, uh, okay, I'll just let it go. I can't, I don't know what you said. I see you have reflective tape for the jacket, though, so that's awesome. In case I was, like, hunting up here. I think he's talking about me. No, this guy up there. Alright, I have uh, a couple tips for you guys if you're uh, on a date. I was on uh, a website called marieclaire.com. Oh, reflective. <laughs> I got a wow over here. You got something, anything. Marie Claire uh, had an article called 51 Ideas for Second Dates. That's a lot of ideas. And you can tell, like, if you read this article, they kind of stretch on a lot of these ideas. One of Marie Claire's ideas is visit the library. <laughs> <laughs> Share some of your all time favorite passages from childhood. Perhaps Dr. Seuss. Or check out the Kama Sutra. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Regardless, whispering can be extremely sexy. One fish, two fish. <laughs> My name, Sam, I am. <laughs> Another um, repair piece of advice for Jamie. Go fishing! This is one activity that will give you plenty of time to talk and get to know each other. You might even catch something. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Crabs, you don't know. You never know. <laughs> ha. 
could have been not true for you, that the change. Because I don't want to think about that when I'm thinking about a date. I don't think hypochondriacs. My mind goes to that place anyway. I'm such a hypochondriac. I always read like the health pamphlets at doctors' offices. And by the way, I read that um, one of the pamphlets that said they used to wash your hands from the length of a verse of Happy Birthday. Has anybody ever read that before? It said, if it helps, you should hum or sing Happy Birthday out loud as you wash your hands. If you don't think that's weird, try that the next time you're at a truck stop. Just give it a try. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if I walk into a public bathroom and there's just some guy going, like, Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday to me! I'm just gonna walk out. Even if there's cake, I don't care. I, another pamphlet I read uh, in the doctor's office was one of STDs. And I was reading this, and it occurred to me they don't even try to be realistic with these pamphlets, they just want to terrify you. Because the pamphlet, the pamphlet reads like this. Chlamydia. How common is it? Very common! <laughs> Gonorrhea. How common is it? Look to your left. Look to your right. Both those people have gonorrhea. And so do you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show. Sit in the front row. What's your name? Jackson. Jackson. It's a cool name. Uh, Jackson, thank you for coming to the show. <laughs> Path of Exile. What does that mean? What? Is this like the nerd row here? Are you all together? <laughs> is it a video game? What? It's made by my brother. Adolf, Adolf Hitler made the path of exile. <laughs> I don't understand what that means, but that's awesome. All right, thank you, Jackson, for being here. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's good to have you. Uh, it's sports in the car. I'm, I'm also sorry, you I don't know. Are you with anybody here? Oh, you're married? Oh, I'm sorry that he has gone right up. I, I realize that statistically, anytime I, I point to somebody every time I do that joke, but statistically I probably point to somebody who actually has gotten away at this point. And my theory is like most people don't laugh. And you like <laughs> you like smiled and gave me the thumbs up. <laughs> so maybe you're like waiting for like the test results to come in on uh, some like some sort of a good luck to both of you. <laughs> it's good See a stand-up comedy show. <laughs> Laughing releases endorphins, which is a great tone for the night, but be sure to sit in the back. A good comedian will pick on even the smallest hint of awkwardness and to exploit it. Come <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jackson. I won't bother you anymore. Just tell us about your most awkward sexual experience. Would you call it the path of exile would have <laughs> You don't have to say anything about that. Are you going to dirty talk? Uh, I love it that you were about to tell me about the awkward sexual experience. I'm like, well, let me think. You put your finger to your chin, like I've like, many to pick from. <laughs> Is he good at dirty talk? Oh, <laughs> high five, that's a bad. Talk to me after the show because I'm terrible at it. I don't know what to say. I get shy and embarrassed. I don't even know how to respond to dirty talk in my direction. I won't say, I'm going to throw you down the bed to terrify your clothes and scratch your back and fight your neck. I don't know how to whisper. Why don't you whisper a foreign language earlier? Whisper something in a foreign language. Okay. Uh, no hablo uh, espanol. <laughs> I've had many awkward sexual experiences. One time, my first like real romantic experience, I was making out with my girlfriend on the couch in college, and I was like, how can I make this like super hot? How can I like get this to the bedroom in the sexiest way? I thought, I'm gonna pick her up. 
<laughs> and carry her to the bed. Then it'll be hot and masculine. Couple of rules. If you're ever going to pick up your girlfriend or your wife, first of all, don't make any grunting noises when you do that. <laughs> like, oh, jeez, what the hell? Woo, I'm going to be sore in my. Is that the floor horse crack in my back? Don't do that. Don't do that, it was like way too much line and way too much confidence. She was normal weight, but I had no experience with how much adult humans weighed. So I picked her up way too quick and started falling over immediately. It was like I picked her up just with her on the ground. I'm like, I didn't like that. Happy Valentine's Day. So what do you say in that moment? Five second rule, I don't know what you say. It's really awkward. So I'll, I'll leave you guys with this. You guys have a lot of fun. You love your headliner. I'm terrified about the thought of a broken condom. I just felt the fear of waiting on the I've actually read the Trojan condom instructions to give any tips on what to do if the condom breaks. And they actually do have instructions on the inside of the box that says, if the condom breaks, quote, don't panic. <laughs> this wash up area with soap and water. Can you imagine anybody actually doing it? They're like, oh my god, kind of broke. Don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> Got some Irish spring here. And some paper towels. And some subs. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Can be heard in Bobby Town. Please give a warm central Wisconsin welcome for Michael Harrison. Yeah, give it up for the sound guy, my Paul Schaefer. Let's give it up for him. And our uh, other acts we saw tonight, and Jackson for being a fucking stud. You are a great sport, I have to admit it. For being front row and like maybe having gonorrhea, you are a great sport. Like that's, that would be my fear to come into a comedy show is someone saying, I think you might have AIDS. You know what I mean? Especially here when you have beautiful single women and they're like, okay, maybe not him tonight. You're a great sport, and I'm so happy to be here tonight. I'm, uh, I'm stoked. I've done this club once before, and I had an absolute blast. And uh, I'll say this up at the top. I'm Canadian. That's my thing. Oh, the fuck no one cares. I love that. <laughs> they just look at me like, oh, he looks just like me. You can replace me. That's creepy. And I actually come from a small town in Canada, 500 people. And we only had five things. We had a gas station, a restaurant, elementary school, a church, and a hockey rink. Yeah, yeah, right? I love that a hockey rink is a bigger priority than, say, a hospital. <laughs> people are walking up like, my hips sore. It's like, oh, I'm going on the ice. <laughs> And now I tour across America, which I love. I love this country. It's so weird, because I used to be scared of you guys. I really was. I don't know if you guys know this, but other countries say bad things about you. All right, FYI. <laughs> they do. I'm sorry to bring it up. And you don't deserve it. You don't. Like, seriously, before I started touring, if you told me you're American, I'd have gave you my wallet and walked away. That was like my, my go-to move. <laughs> I hear it, like, even growing up, people tell us, oh, Americans, if guns will shoot you, and there's racism. And then I come to America, I'm like, what do you think of Canada? I'm like, oh, they're very friendly. It's like the weirdest one-sided fight I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> We're like your torpy little brother, you know what I mean? Like, America's a duty face. Oh, isn't Canada so cute? <laughs> Because you guys are actually really, really nice. Especially if I'm Canadian, you sort of treat me like a Care Bear. <laughs> you just find us so adorable. Always expecting us to say A all the time. 
which is awkward because I don't say hey at all. Like I was in a conversation with one American, I didn't say hey once. He looked at me like I was defective. <laughs> So this Canadian's broken, I want a new one. <laughs> and the other thing you love about Canadians is their free healthcare. I was like, oh, you're Canadian, you got free healthcare, that's amazing. It's like, yeah, I don't know why you guys don't have it too. Right, because you have a right to bear arms. There's a country that deserves free healthcare. It's probably the one with access to dangerous weapons. <laughs> Right, I go see a doctor whenever I get a sliver. There's broke Americans who get shot. Look at it. Like I think I could take care of this myself. <laughs> Saw everyone at Grey's Anatomy last night. I think I'm good. Because <laughs> ultimately, like we, all we get is your guys' TV and media. So it's funny because you guys put down yourselves more than anyone. Like it's ridiculous. Like whenever I watch TV, you guys always identify yourselves as being overweight, which I think is unfair because your food's delicious. Right, you put bacon and cheese on everything. I love it. I went to a restaurant in Florida, I had a veggie burger. The first thing the waitress's mouth was, did you want bacon on that? I was like, how crappy is your veggie burger? But midway through, people like, I changed my mind. Let's get a dead animal on this right away. Because I'll be honest, I used to be a fat kid. Like when I was born, I actually came out 11 pounds, one ounce. Yeah, I know! People just look at me like, is your mom still alive? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I tore her up. I feel terrible for my dad. You're right. <laughs> Seriously, do we have mothers here? Or... Holy shit, that's what I feel. Y'all look so young, that's amazing. You're a mother? How, how old's your kid? Eleven? Nice. And how big was she when she came out? He was eight pounds? He was eight pounds? Holy fuck. If we came out at the same time, I could have ate your kid. Right? You <laughs> would have been like, where's Junior? <laughs> <laughs> That's unreal. Like, think about that. Eleven pounds coming out of that. If something ever came out of me, it was eleven pounds, I wouldn't even like it. <laughs> Doctor, like, are you gonna beat him? Not to apologize. <laughs> I love your laugh, by the way. <laughs> Sound like a goblin. That's unreal. <laughs> I know, I got a weird laugh too, right? Like, if we fucked our kid, would be annoying. <laughs>
was he cooking a hamburger or opening up the grill? Like, how did that Snapple get here? <laughs> And another reason why I have kids is eventually turn to teenagers. It's a horrible side effect. <laughs> right? Because they're so aggressive. It's getting there for you. Because about 14, they just become a dick. <laughs> Doesn't matter how good of a mom or a dad you are. That kid wants to be independent, so it's just going to be a little shit. <laughs> right? Like, I recently saw this 14 year old crossing his intersection and had a green light. Made a car have to stop. So the car went to the kid, the kid looked at the car and gave him the finger. The finger. The motorist was shocked. He looked at me, looked at the back like hit him. I'll drop him off at a hockey rink, he'll be fine. Oh, I got a snort. I like that. Got some snorters in the crowd. That's when you know you've got a good joke when people start acting like farm animals, you know? That's the ideal. I want to go to the next evolution and maybe make like, someone laugh so hard they go, moo. Maybe it's nice. Do I have to, do I have to address that laugh? Because you just started laughing at me. <laughs> that was a little rude. <laughs> It is, it is what you're going to laugh. It's, it's so ridiculous, too. Like, I recently did this show uh, up north in Canada, and a fair was going on. And the fair had my favorite ride, the zipper. You guys know what the zipper is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's my favorite ride. And I haven't been on it in seven years. So me and my buddy decided to go. We got super drunk the night before, right? Oh. Exactly. Don't do that. <laughs> He walked up and he's like, man, I got hammered. I can't go on this ride. But you have to double up to go. So some parents overheard us. They walked up and they're like, hey, do you want to take our 13-year-old daughter with you? And I was like, giddy up. Let's do this. All right? Because I don't want to go on this ride. And this is the first time this 13-year-old was all hyped to go. So we go on it. For those who don't know what the zipper is, you're basically put into a cage and then you're flipped around as fast as possible. And I started having such a good time that I started laughing. <laughs> and I scared the little girl. I <laughs> know she started crying midway through the ride. Just sitting there like, is this what I'm making go insane? What's going on right now? I felt terrible. I kept trying to calm her down. Like, no, this is why I appreciate joy. <laughs> She just lost it. <laughs> it feels so bad. Wow. Nice. I love the tie you got, my friend. Nice. You dressed up for me. That's perfect. I know. That guy wore a, a hunting life jacket. <laughs> See? In comparison. I'm good with both. It's just so funny how it looks like you guys thought you were both coming to different events. <laughs> you showed up like I'm ready to be an accountant, and he showed up like I'm ready to shoot something. <laughs> he doesn't miss with like a hunting rifle, you know? He's missing a calculator. I don't know how. You got a very variety of an audience here. And you got your baseball hat on, that's good. In case the sun breaks through, you're fucking ready. That guy is ready for anything. He's prepared. I love it. A lot of couples, that's good. I, uh, I'm out of a relationship now. I, me and my girl, four and a half years, broke up a couple months ago, which is, uh, which is fine. Sometimes good people don't work out. But, Sarah! Man. Sorry? <laughs> Are you trying to hook me up? <laughs> Whoa, you're aggressive. You go fuck Sarah right now. No! Shut up! Stop doing your acting. You go fuck Sarah. She's been single for a while. Alright. Here's a condom, but you go fuck the hell out of her. Get that last guy up here. Do 10 more minutes. I'm in control of this shit, alright? You look like a 10 minute guy. You're a, you're a hot top for sure. 10 minutes tops? Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, Sarah, I feel just as awkward as you. Wherever you are. She's up there. She's up there. She's up there. I don't care yet. <laughs> I'm in the middle of work. <laughs> we'll get there later, though. How's that stuff? Let's deal with that in a, in a bit. But I love your exuberance. You know what I mean? Like, is that how much you guys need guys where you have to call dibs that quickly? <laughs> Single dibs, dibs, in the middle of work. I haven't even gotten into the first joke about being single, and she's already dibs. Dibs. I know the laugh's annoying, Sarah, but we can muffle them. <laughs> And you, I love that you both got your arms tied up like you're the bouncer. <laughs> Let it go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's it. I'm not gonna play with your nipples. It's alright, you can play for free. Oh, they might. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> Jackson, you got a little stiff there. I saw that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Soccer team? Oh, 
That's brutal. So my ex-girlfriend, she was from Guyana. Do you guys know where Guyana is? Yeah, so it'll be great. I didn't. So on her first date, she told me, she's like, I'm Guyanese. I thought she was sick. <laughs> I was like, oh no, that's terrible. Can we fix that? I don't want to hurt your guy, a friend, you know? I was the biggest idiot. And my family was just as bad because they can't pronounce ethnic names. Like my ex-girlfriend's name was Amala. Five letters, Amala, that's it. Before they met her, they got a semicircle and started practicing her name to each other. They're sitting like, is it Amala? Is it Amala? Is it Alamo? It's like watching a bunch of illiterates play Wheel of Fortune. It was so embarrassing. So you know what they decided to do? They decided to turn it into a drinking game. Yeah, they decided to do a shot every time they screwed up her name in front of her. Which is great showing my girlfriend respect and making sure it does get in the way of your alcoholism. At one point, my, my cousin got trashed. I don't even think he cared. Just stumbled up to her like, how are you doing, Adam? I was like, yeah, no. Can't even pick the right gender, you dick. <laughs> And it's funny because, like, it's weird when you're in a relationship. I notice you develop a lot of subliminal habits that you're not even familiar with, right? Like, I remember once being on the road, and there was another comic who didn't have a place to stay, so they told me he could crash in my hotel. Now, I didn't know he had a bad back, right? So, me and him decided that we had to, like, share a bed. And uh, so, we're sleeping in the bed, and I didn't know this, but apparently, in the middle of the night, whenever I sleep with my uh, ex girlfriend, I used to like to tickle her back. Yeah, which is a great way to get a guy out of your bed. <laughs> I woke up and saw him on the ground like, holy fuck, your doctor's not going to be happy, my friend. <laughs> yeah, still waiting for you. <laughs> I really love that one. That's the best one. This chick's trying to send dick pics, so I don't know what to check that out. <laughs> no, is this your, your this is your boyfriend, all right? Husband? Which one? Him, yeah, right? You? <laughs> <laughs> well, who is he? Plan B? What is this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed that this was talked about, by the way. I was in and out of the room. You're in a threesome? That's fine. <laughs> and he fits a, a, a fantasy, that's for sure. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, how long have you been married to this young gentleman? Like eight months. Eight months, congratulations. How did you propose to your beautiful wife? Uh, it was actually really rushed. Um... Really rushed? <laughs> what was the hurry? Trying to get a green card like me? Is that what it was? Sarah, we might need to get married soon, by the way. I just want to give you a heads up. <laughs> You're a good at job you didn't care for? Okay. So much information. All right. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, uh, I didn't walk You just had one happy day and you're like, fuck it, let's get married. Good. Nice, and how did you propose to her? He said, hey, do you want to get married? It's your best day and you couldn't get on one knee or anything? You're just, you're acting like she's a bro? Did you also fist bump her right after or what? <laughs> He kissed her on the lips? Good, I hope so. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, so romantic. That's so funny. I actually met one girl who told me her boyfriend proposed her in the middle of sex. I'm serious, the middle of sex? That's insane. Like, why do you want to ruin such a special occasion with a marriage proposal? Because <laughs> I'll be honest, I can never do something like that. I mean, it's really calm she's going to say yes. Or really sell Sarah to keep going if she says no. <laughs> Can't waste that phone. We're gonna get five or six hours a day. They're special. Let's uh, <laughs> save your phones. That's the point of that joke. <laughs> That's the message I try to get by. <laughs> nice laugh. 
Yeah. And one thing I actually uh, visited about my ex is she loved going to dance clubs, right? And I loved to date her because guys bought her tons of drinks. <laughs> yeah, and she didn't drink, so I came to Papa. <laughs> like dating an open bar, I love this. <laughs> There's days where I walked up to her, I'm like, you're so a bit more cleavage tonight. I'm saving for a house. Because that's one of the perks to being a female. Free drinks, it's awesome. It's not like you don't deserve it, you do. I've seen women spend hours doing their hair, putting on makeup, organizing an outfit, putting on high heels, cutting your fingernails, you're damn right you get a free drink, you're like a transformer. You know? <laughs> like some of it's even too far. Like cutting your fingernails. Who told women that guys care what color your nails are? Never once went into a nightclub, saw some girl's nails like wrong color. Fuck off, alright? <laughs> yeah, red's a game changer. <laughs> it makes no sense. Because I feel almost bad for women sometimes. Everyone's so aggressive. Women are aggressive too now that I've noticed. Like, I got torched for the first time. Holy shit, I know. What kind of devil dance is that, right? For those who know what twerking is, this is what happened to me. Some girl brought me on the dance floor, and immediately she shoved her butt in my midsection. Then she bent over and started gyrating her butt like a bicycle seat that was missing a screw. <laughs> yeah, just giving it. And the whole time I was standing there like, please don't get pregnant, please don't get pregnant, please don't get pregnant. The legs were still, the back was stiff, but going 100 miles an hour. Oh, what a freak show. At one point, I put my drink in her back, you even fall off. Damn, like a human coaster. This is awesome. I heard a bird. My parents told me nothing about the birds and the bees growing up. My mom, she was so nervous. She tried once, she came up like, uh, did you know you came up because of romance? What's that even mean? I assume my dad handed her a rose and she was so impressed I fell out. <laughs> Cause I get it. Some some people have a tough time telling their kids, right? Like I met one woman who was so nervous about telling her 16 year old daughter that instead she offered her 30 grand to keep her virginity until she's 18. Yeah, 30 grand, that's insane, right? I kept mine for free. <laughs> Her vagina can feed a village. That's not real. <laughs> you know, because like, it's just true. Like, my parents, this is how weird it was. Like, I remember when I was seven years old, because you do, you have to tell your kids. They have imagination. Like, I remember when I was seven years old, my cousin was pregnant. I don't know how babies are created. Almost my mom, when I was a kid inside her stomach, we were scared the shit out of me, such as eating children. <laughs> I ate my shoes, huge. Like, get this woman a pizza. I could be next. Come on. <laughs> like, I was petrified. Because you have to tell them. Like, me, I learned everything on the playground, which is a great resource. Other kids who don't know shit. Right? I remember some kid ran up to me. He's like, I just found out masturbation causes blindness. <laughs> like, who gives a fuck? I can still find it. Right, right, right. <laughs> That hunter had the best reaction, by the way. Not, not only did he laugh, but he did up. Uh, I've never seen a guy that I'm more convinced is stone now. <laughs> uh, I love it. Alright, well if we're gonna be honest, this is this is probably something super embarrassing about me. Here's how big of an idiot I am when it came to like learning about the birds and bees. Because my parents had told me nothing. Nothing. And you should. Because you don't want people to find out, you know, on their own. You should do it. And this is true, within the last year I just found out I was circumcised. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? I didn't know that my whole life. Because I just knew what I had. That was it. 
Why did my mom tell me? Was she sitting like he'll see enough dicks? He'll figure out his own, you know what I mean? Because I remember when I saw my first anteater, I was horrified. Oh my god, that's ugly. They almost threw a rock at it, you know what I mean? Seriously, I thought the top was amputated and the skin fell over. Like some homeless guy wrapped up in a sleeping blanket, you know what I mean? I felt terrible for him. I almost gave him change. Yeah. Never look at a guy's dick and offer him $10 in quarters, alright? That is not appropriate. <laughs> and you know how I found out? My girlfriend at the time told me. Oh, what a sweet deal that is. When someone who never had a wiener tells you what yours is. <laughs> Just a perplexed look at her face that you're so much dumber than I thought. <laughs> Start showing me pictures. I was like, holy shit, like, my parents lied about Santa and this? This is awful. <laughs> I feel like I should redeem, redeem my parents a bit now. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest, like, even though my mom was a bit of a prick growing up, like, she's now divorced my dad a few years ago, and now my mom's turned into a free spirited hippie. <laughs> it's like so weird, like, so uncomfortable for me now. Like, I kid you not, over a month and a half ago, she emailed me out of the blue and said she married her uh, new boyfriend. Yeah, without inviting me or any of my siblings to the marriage. I was just sitting there, I was like, Mom, you're in your 50s, are you kidding me? For once, did you stop being cooler than me? I'm like, shit! <laughs> like, I didn't even get it, you know? It's just insane. And don't get me wrong, she's, uh, she's married as this horny Frenchman. And uh, his name's Mark, and I like him. He's a really cool dude. I remember when I first met him, he was awesome. And then the next day, my mom giddily called me, and he's like, Hey, Mike, guess what? Right when you left, Mark jumped on me and said, Let's make little Mikeys. And I was like, Whoa, that's... Mom, you know I'm old enough to tell you could scar me. That is fucking... <laughs> Why would you tell me that I was your wingman and just got me laid, right? That was freaking <laughs> brutal information to hear right there. I was the foreplay for their, their, their night. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know what, I don't even think I redeemed my mom. Like, I thought I would in that moment. I love this job. This is like so unreal that I could talk about my circumcision in front of strangers. Right, that doesn't fly at McDonald's. <laughs> People just look at you like, give me my fries and curve, all right? Because this is all I do for a living, this is it. If you guys don't laugh, I starve. Right? It's hilarious. And I love it. Like, I will admit it, I do sort of miss having a day job. Because day jobs, you can slack off. You can't slack off and stand up. I don't care how drunk you guys get. You see me sleeping under the stool, you'll notice. <laughs> It's, it's great, too, because you can drink at this job. Like I, remember, I remember when I first started comedy, all they paid me was in alcohol. Right? They didn't give me money. And when I started out, I remember the owner came up to me. He's like, hey, you can have two beers, and then you can go perform. And I was like, really? I get to drink at my job? That's why I got fired from a lot of jobs before this. <laughs> That's awesome. Because I did. I've, been, I've actually been fired from eight jobs. Yeah, eight. I'm a terrible employee, but I'm great at interviews. <laughs> right? Like, I've been fired so much, I get offended when people tell me they quit. I'm like, stop bragging. I stay at my job until they want me to leave, because that's polite. Because <laughs> you have to face it, getting fired, it's so aggressive. Has anyone been fired here before? I should ask that quickly. No, no Jackson, of course. <laughs> Why? Because you gave the boss gonorrhea? What was it? I didn't know now, gonorrhea. I'm joking. You're a great sport, by the way. I, I really don't want to, like, make you feel bad anymore, but are you sure? Okay, then what, how did you get fired? Oh yeah, long story. <laughs> I forgot your... <laughs> I don't even know where you worked. You didn't even start another way. Where'd you work? Grocery yeah. store. Yeah. Footlocker, that's great. What'd you do? Uh, was, uh, uh, computer guy. Technical services analyst. That was her. Okay, and well, how did you get fired? Well, I thought I had one month in 
He told me to get the hell off the premises? That's how he fucking fired you? Holy shit, what a dick. <laughs> that is, hey? Because I'll admit it, that's the one thing I hate about getting fired, is they're too aggressive. Aren't they? Like, look at the terminology. They tell you things like you're sacked, you're canned, you're fired. One time I worked at McDonald's, they told me I was terminated. I was like, who are you, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like, he's not. Uh, I make McGriddle, it's not that serious. Yeah, and it's so funny. Oh, I don't know, you know what my favorite part of getting fired is? You get a severance check. Yeah, you get your average two weeks pay. They give you free money because they're too stupid to realize I was too stupid to work there. Yeah. <laughs> right, I watch them punish themselves for believing in me. That is a pretty awkward moment. Because I'll tell you my worst. My worst fire was when I went to the gas station. I got fired because I put diesel in your regular engine car. Yeah, you know, that does. That destroys an engine. I didn't even know I could do that for minimum wage. <laughs> right, but the woman on the car, and she came out like, you moron, you just destroyed my vehicle. I was like, I make six fifty an hour. All right. It's at least an eight dollar an hour responsibility. <laughs> then ten minutes later, I saw her car get towed away. And I was like, holy shit, I should really ask for a raise. She could pay more not to do that. So you know what my boss made me do? Made me drive the woman home. Ah, oh, what a five-star experience that is. <laughs> right, destroying someone's vehicle, driving 20 minutes to a place while they yell at you the whole time? Ah, oh, chef recommended. <laughs> By the time I got her to her place, she opened up my door, slammed it shut. I was so pissed off, I looked at her, I was like, lady, learn how to take care of a car. <laughs> I know, it's so socially awkward. Like, I used to work at a coffee shop, I used to always say, have a good one after everything. Do you guys know that term, have a good one? People would come in and be like, here's your drink, have a good one. Here's your change, have a good one. Yes. One time this girl walked in and she asked for the key to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she did not have a good one after I said that. Yes. <laughs> and it was absurd that I even worked there, because I don't even like hot drinks. I don't know, I'm too impatient. I don't know who in the history of the world ever walked up to a counter like, I need something undrinkable right now. <laughs> but I like to drink it in 15 minutes. Five, I blow like a hurricane. <laughs> right, this doesn't make sense to me. It hurts you. Why do we do something that hurts us? Even lab mice, when they touch an electrical fence and get shocked, they don't go back. Whenever we take a sip and burn our tongue, I'm like, I'll do that again tomorrow and awakens me. <laughs> And I'm not narrow-minded, I've tried it. I remember when I was young, I had a sip of hot chocolate, it burned my tongue, it was like, lesson learned, never doing that again, and I did it. And even a few months ago, my roommate brought me a hot chocolate, and I was like, it knows what it did. <laughs> right? Because that's too stressful. Why do we drink hot drinks? I'm not gonna do something I can't comfortably consume in a hammock. I think that's my policy. Because all you hot drinkers, you always tell me, oh, it's so relaxing and calming. Really? You see yourselves drink it? Sort of looks like you're diffusing a ball. <laughs> right? You're always crouched over and slowly bringing it to your mouth. Beads of sweat coming off your forehead. Then you start sipping at it. But you don't even touch liquid. What the fuck are you doing when you're sipping at your drink and not touching the liquid? <laughs> it looks like you're absorbing steam. What the hell are you doing? And that's another thing. When your drink changes from molecular formula from liquid to steam just to escape a cup, that means don't go in the fucking cup. All right? It sucks ass. <laughs> and maybe that's why Starbucks plays so much Josh Girl, but just to calm you down in that stressful situation. <laughs> By the way, I have 15 minutes on how much I hate hot drinks. I could really carry this out. Like, there's comics writing jokes about world issues in the corner, like, I gotta bring down mochas. This is, I'm sick of this. <laughs> Because it's unreal, and this is how dumb I am with hot drinks. Like, what is it, uh, a year ago, I was headlining this comedy club, and in the green room, they hit a basket full of tea bags. And I swear to you, I thought they were all condoms. <laughs> yeah, look, I'll show it to you. Uh, except it was all black, but look at this. Does this not look like a condom from far away? 
Like, I mean, it was all black, right? It looks like a magnum. It looks exactly right. You have a big dick. It would have been like that if you saw it. Like, it's all past me. He's from far away. You know what I'm talking about. I was like, oh my god, all these comics are pimping. Are you kidding me? Oh, they're flavored too. Mine's chamomile. <laughs> I love your laugh. Man. I know, and if you not notice your laugh now ends with like a giddy little four year old laugh. She does the cat laugh. I love the progression. It's beautiful. I'm a fan. We've got to make that into a ringtone and sell it. You know what I mean? Oh, you and me. We have to do that. That's actually a good idea. Shit, I love this. You guys are amazing. Like it's a, I, fuck. I just love that I'm like performing too in a bar where I can say anything. Like a lot of these jokes, I, I'm really getting them out right now. Like I've been performing at high schools lately. It's unreal. Oh, I know, I know. You can't do anything. Like once I had a fucking principal come up to me and is like, um, okay, I don't want you to talk about sex, drugs, or alcohol. And I was like, what else do teenagers like? <laughs> I think they're pretty much handcuffing me at this point. <laughs> Cause that's like, I don't know, I, I have, oh, I do so many gigs, it's unreal. Like I, there's another comedian of my name, Michael Harrison, right? And he's a ventriloquist. And I got one of his gigs once. I showed up to the show and all the flyers said featuring superstar ventriloquist from America's Got Talent, Michael Harrison. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I hope they like cock jokes. <laughs> I mean, I'll say them out of the sock if I have to, you know? Uh... <laughs> I know. Like, it's just, ah! One really cool gig, actually, and this happened this year, is I got a headline gig ride in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Because I was on the TV show Queer as Folk. And uh, they found out, but they didn't know that I'm actually a straight man. Yeah, so they invited me to Queer as Folk. By the way, when I saw how much I was getting paid, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get this gig. But once I got there, fuck, did I get nervous. I got really nervous because, like, man, the act before me, he kept talking about being a top, right? Killing it. And it dawned on me, I don't even know the lingo. Like, I didn't even know what a top was. I had no clue what that meant. I turned to the guy next to me, I'm like, what's a top? He's like, don't worry, you're a bottom. <laughs> I was like, wow, what a way to find out. There you go. <laughs> so awkward. Yeah, I don't know, I do, I do have to admit. I love it. Like, I'm, I'm a pretty positive guy, I know I've noticed. Like, things switched up in my life, really need to work it out. But you, we should be positive, because you have to admit it, we live in, like, an era of luxury now. Like, we are a very lucky generation. We have it really good. Like, we have so much stuff at our disposal, you know? It's even excessive. Like, I, I was recently at a hotel, and my hotel had six pillows. Six! I've only ever slept with one pillow. Right? I was looking at that, I didn't even know if I knew how to sleep properly. I was in there like, do I know how to do this right? Does everyone in this hotel sleep with five other people? Like, what is this? Because <laughs> that's too many pillows, isn't it? Like, I can make another bed with all those pillows. Just duct tape it together and invite a homeless guy to sleep on the ground and guess what he wants. And one of the pillows was like this long cylindrical tubular pillow. Have you seen that pillow? What the fuck? Was there someone who went to the front like, I want to feel like I'm sleeping on a plush pipe, please, all right? <laughs> They're decorative? They're lame. Are you kidding me? Although, I will say this. If there's ever a pillow fight that goes down, I'm getting that pillow. Without a doubt. Leg sweep, and then I think I can kill you with one good shot to the face and bang your head in the back. <laughs> That's my strategy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I have not heard that. Is that how fucked up my laugh is? Or sometimes you'll hear it, Jesus Christ. What were you doing, God, when you made that fucking guy? <laughs> Maybe that's 
why we have so many interesting laughs here, because they hear my laugh and they're like, oh, I can be free now. <laughs> I'm among another weird laugh room. I love this. But yeah, we have it so good. Like, we really do. Like, have you even noticed how we've invented a ways to avoid walking now? This is like hysterical. Have you seen that? Like, you go to the airport, they have moving sidewalks. And then I've noticed those segways that go eight miles an hour that people are on. And then those little airboards that are like shoes and I see kids moving around. Like in a day and age where we have an obesity epidemic, there was some inventor sitting there like, I think we should fix walking. <laughs> I've had enough of that shit. And segways. I was at the Mall of America. I saw security guards on segways. Are you kidding me? If anyone should avoid uh, should avoid walking, it should probably not be law enforcement. <laughs> Just saying, right? Like, come on, get him a gym membership. This guy's a princess. Because <laughs> they don't even go that fast. And that's my biggest fear, too, is that someone robs me and a security guard comes back on his little scooter. <laughs> like Mr. Harrison almost called him, but he uh, found stairs. <laughs> Like, fuck, well, I guess we lost him. <laughs> Never mind. Because, like, how much lazier can we get? Here's how much lazier. My gym has three floors. To get to each floor, you yeah, should take an escalator. An escalator at a gym. It's a lot of comps to your customers, isn't it? Like, do they think they put in stairs and won't make it? Like, I'm going to walk up halfway, like, oh, I'm going to prepare for this. <laughs> they cut out the squats. Right, because if I ran a gym, I'd be as athletic as possible. Like the front doors, I'd be made of cement. You'd have to push hard just to get in. And there'd be escalators. The only difference is escalators going the opposite direction. You're going, people throwing dodgeballs at your face. You want to go to the washroom, you'd sort of fight with a hobbit. Right? That's a gym. And a lot of my friends, they go to the gym just for fighting reasons. They always tell me, man, it will work out. He's so big, it would take anyone. I was like, oh, the gym doesn't mean I want to fight. Just means you're strong enough to get your ass kicked longer. <laughs> yeah, that's all that is. <laughs> and like, this is, because I hate fighting, this is such an awkward job for that, because I have to perform for alcoholics. Right? And no one likes to fight more than alcoholics. Which makes no sense, because being drunk is a handicap. Right? I don't want to get drunk and throw a punch. I might hit myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it's amazing how sometimes people want to fight. Like, I once had a show, and I had a heckler, and I started making fun of him. He got so offended that he stood up. He started charging me right in the middle of my show. And I can be honest, I'm really cocky. There's an audience full of witnesses. But as soon as I saw him charging, I flipped into the biggest puss you've ever seen. I swear to God, first reaction. I stuck my leg up like this. And I did this. <laughs> yeah, this I'm gonna fend myself if you come at me, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, what's my first move? Do I hit you or flip back? Like, I'm like, I'm past my heart, that's all. <laughs> I know, and you know what saved me was his girlfriend. He had this tiny five foot girlfriend right before he gets to the stage, she intercepts him, grabs him, throws him against the wall, and says, Don't touch him. <laughs> and the dude still tries to look tough. That was the best part. <laughs> Standing like, man, look, like she's here, I'd mess you up. Like, fuck it, let him go. I think I can take you now, alright? <laughs> Just to let that chick out, she'll kick my ass. My apologies, when I moved it with my butt, it made my phone stop recording the set. <laughs> my ass turned my phone off. Well, that's a good confidence boost right there. <laughs> Boom. All right, we're taping this bad boy. Because, yeah, I don't like fighting. Do you like fighting? Not a fan. Not a fan. I agree. Me neither. I don't like fighting. You neither. You're an amateur kickboxing, so you like the fight. So I'm sorry I made fun of you. <laughs> I like when the front row likes to throw that out. By the way, amateur kickboxing, fuckface. <laughs> I don't like fighting. I 
think it's very macho and unnecessary, you know? Unless I'm winning, then it's sexy and brave. <laughs> My favorite part of fighting is seeing guys trying to intimidate you before a fight. That cracks me up. Right? They go over their fighting resume, try to scare you off. Come up like, what do you want to mess with me? I know karate, you kung fu, you don't want to It's like, dude, I know your dick is, I'll kick it. Alright. <laughs> Yeah, fun doing the praying mantis are quivering on the ground, man, it happened. Because my my worst fear is that some guy came up to me like, dude, I know jujitsu and have no balls. <laughs> Holy shit, you're invincible, right? That's why. Of course, looks smarter, not walking into walls. <laughs> like, I was so unpopular in grade 9. I was actually the least popular kid in my grade. I even remember the second least popular kid used to make fun of me. <laughs> he said, like, dude, chill out. What happens when I'm sick? You're gonna have to bat me in the brow. Alright. <laughs> I changed schools, I ruined your life. <laughs> You could tell he's been bullied before. By the way, that. that was the funny thing about that. That was like one of those really pure good laughs where you're like, oh, I know that for sure. That experience. But that's the funny thing about being a comedian, because once I had my TV special and I got to do a lot of things, uh, my bullies actually came out to see me at a show and are now my friends. I couldn't believe that I ever gave them that quickly, but they came up and were like, we were this. And I was like, all right, that's okay. Now. <laughs> And now I'm friends with my bullies, which is weird. First off, I should tell you I said bullies because I got picked on by twins. Yeah, they made two of the same of the worst human I ever met. <laughs> Couldn't even believe that that could fucking happen, right? <laughs> Holy shit. Like, it was unreal. Like, sometimes I get beat up and like my dad would be like, who hit you? It's like, I don't know which one, you know? <laughs> I don't know which one beat me up today. They narrow it down to two names, that's all. <laughs> it's the fucking worst. Couldn't tell the difference, not at all. Like muscles and everything in the same spots. What a fucking lame over. Now they're like my like my biggest fans. It's unreal. It's hilarious. They try to like reminisce with me, I'm like, yeah, we're not gonna reminisce. <laughs> Don't make it awkward. Remember the time in high school everything was great? Oh yeah, you ignored me and then would slam my face in my locker? Yeah, I fucking great times. <laughs> Because yeah, it's, it's so weird. Some people like to be mean, right? Like, even against babies. That's sort of odd. Is there, like, a culture of baby hating now? Like, people talk about ugly babies. I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? Right? I have a cousin who is sitting there and like, hey, like, check out that ugly baby. I'm like, yeah, it's not done yet. <laughs> it's becoming a human. You better break, all right? And not only that, what can it do to fix the situation? Right? His arms are too small. It's not like you can put on makeup or, or wear a lipstick. Fucking give it a break, alright? Because I don't know. I did like going to school, though. School is fun. I feel like people should encourage intelligence. Too many dumb people now. It should. Like, even the media should. The media doesn't encourage intelligence. Whenever I turn on music videos, I always see some talentless high school dropout singing while they girls around in a mud wrestling. They don't make intelligence look that cool. Never turn on Jeopardy inside two girls make it up and some guy got a daily double. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a conversation with a chick friend and she's like, well, we prefer guys that are intelligent. I'm like, that's bullshit. Yeah. If that's true, why does he more in bars than libraries? I've never once seen a girl in a mean skirt and nonfiction. 
way to beat off some guy because he finished to kill a mockingbird. <laughs> Instead of buying them drinks, give them the front tail, put those books on my library card, alright? I got this baby. And the last comic was talking about that, that ad where it's like taking a girl to a library on a second date. That's fucking first date for me. I don't care what anyone says. I love the library. Do we, does anyone else love libraries here? Is that a thing or is it just me? Yeah? One? Alright, good enough for me. This is all for you. Because I love libraries. I love it. Because everything's free. Free movies, free music, free books. It's like Disneyland for cheap people. I love it. <laughs> And some people take it for granted. There's a library once, you know, when the intercom, this girl goes, the internet's now down for 20 minutes. And some girl at the computer goes, jeez, what next? It's like, what next? Ever thought about waiting? Right, there's books and magazines. It's like the ultimate waiting room. But she couldn't. She got up and she started yelling at the librarian. And this is what I heard her say. Is like, you know what, we pay taxes. It's your job to maintain. And I was thinking, if you depend on the library for your email, you probably don't pay taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a safe ad. <laughs> and the library I go to actually lets me take out 50 items. 50 items, that's amazing. You know what I can do with 50 items? I can start my own library. <laughs> then I abuse it, too. I've actually taken out 43 items before. 43, there's no way I'm going through 43 items in three weeks. I was holding on to shit so other people can't get it at this point. I think it's a joke I should take out 50 books on boarding. See the little librarian's face like he's an asshole. Because it's funny, because I don't know. I just feel like people should get smarter. One thing I always hear is that kids are so smart. Like my niece, I love her to death, but man, my sister's like, oh, my baby's so brilliant. I'm like, really? Well, if we were at Thanksgiving, she heard me say the F word. She decided to scream it out in the middle of dinner. I was <laughs> just so embarrassed. Like, are you kidding me? Of all words to hear me say and to say out loud, you chose that one? I said existentialism earlier that day. Why don't you fucking say that? <laughs> oh, what a white trash baby. If you ask me. Because I don't know, I had some intelligence scares. Like, I recently got my wisdom teeth removed. And I was so broke, I went down to the university and I let some students do it. Yeah, have you guys ever let students do major dental work? Ask to see some grades. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, because you know what you're going to get. Like I was frightened to get some stone slacker whose father paid extra tuition. Some kid who shows up wearing a helmet with some goggles, holding a putter. Standing there, is that the wisdom teeth? No, that's his nose. I like blue Legos. <laughs> Wisdom teeth removed, you get a swollen jaw. When I came to us, I had a black eye. I don't know how the hell I got that. All I know was I was put up and I came back with a puffy, puffy cheek and a shiner. Where they stand in it like he's waking up. <laughs> she gave us another five minutes. Right, quickly before I finish this up, I want to let you guys know that I'll be off in the corner trying to sell some shirts tonight because that's why I got into comedy. Sell clothing. <laughs> I have a feeling, to be honest, this shirt is going to fit a lot of people in this crowd. Uh, it says, I only drink on special occasions, like if I run out of weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the hunter right there. He did the same head nod. Oh. <laughs> and you did that, like you won. <laughs> yeah! You're the highest fucking amateur Thai boxing. Fuck, that's great. I do like learning who's what they learned recently. I recently went to a porn shop. And get this, they don't even call it porn anymore. They call it adult entertainment. Which I think is stupid because kids like it too. <laughs> yeah. And it actually reminded me of the first time I ever got one of those videos. I was in high school and I bought a five hour video. I was 12. I couldn't even beat five minutes. Like, I still haven't seen into that movie. 
And it's crazy because the more of those movies I got as a kid, the cockier I got high. I go, like the fourth one I ever got, I took the video, put it right back in the second section of my house, and on the label I wrote educational documentary of Germany on it. I thought that was a brilliant misdirection. Turns out there is nothing more suspicious in my household than a video of that label. <laughs> my dad cracked that case in two seconds. Like educational documentary of Germany. Mike's an idiot. That's gotta be porn. He spelled Germany with a J. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, my name is Mike Garrison. Thanks so much for coming up. I'm going to be outside. Come say hi. Thank you very much. Keep supporting that comedy. Is uh, we're gonna start, we're gonna bring a DJ and okay, start clearing out the tables. This, this light turns into a dance, get your groove on. So, if you want to hang out and dance, go hang out there, wait for move the tables, and come back in and dance. There you go. And then, uh, remember to leave the comment cards on the table and uh, karaoke's on the other side if you feel like singing. Thanks again for coming out, everyone.